all the big money players are just waiting for the signal to pull their funds out of public stocks and collapse the markets. Thinking it will be a few months before the next federal election in November 2020. The banksters snag the power to print money out of thin air. They print trillions and loan it to their bankster buddies, who put the debt on their corporations for stock buybacks and take the profits for themselves. For some reason, that doesn't support the economy, and things continue to get worse. So do it all over again, and again, and again. What could possibly go wrong? You want to know why the market is this high? If we remove corporate stock buybacks and showed the real growth rate, along with a real interest rate of 7 to 9%, the market would be around 15,000. The buybacks represent 5 to 1 in stock buys or 500% of market activity. What's holding up the market is debt. It is debt that the bankers never intend to pay it back, so they print more and more, and one day the serfs will see the money is worth nothing, and the banks are insolvent scammers. What happens on the day the markets re-engage the public debt? And corporate debt? And personal debt? It's game over. Meanwhile, cluelessness abounds. More debt is an essential feature of this particular financial system. Debt is the only way money is created. No debt equals no money. And how will the interest on this ever-increasing debt ever be paid? It will never be paid off. Never. It is not a bull market, it is a QE-induced inflation in asset prices. The stock market is obviously being kept up by some artificial means so that the fat cats can finish passing the bag to the retail investor and go on an extended vacation. No other way to explain this lunacy. Buybacks and central banks. Enough said. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. In his most recent podcast, Peter Schiff addressed a number of subjects, including Bitcoin, the stock market, wealth inequality, the Fed, and the voting age. He also said we should be thankful for capitalism. Stock markets hit record highs again this week. Some of it was due to more optimism about a trade deal with China. Peter said he downplays the impact of QE4 on the markets. I mean, I knew QE4 was coming. I was 100% certain of that. I knew the Fed was going to cut rates, and they've been doing that. I just sort of underestimated how much upward pressure it was going to put on the US stock market. I actually thought that the dollar would be falling as a result of the Fed surprising everybody by doing precisely what I expected. Which was cutting rates and going back to QE. Well, they did absolutely what I expected, except the dollar hasn't gone down. But I just think I want to add, yet. The dollar hasn't gone down, yet. Because it is going to go down and when it falls, it's going to fall like a stone. And I don't think that's going to be a positive for the US stock market or the US bond market, and we're going to see a much bigger move up in the price of gold. Peter said a lot of people who are making money in the US stock market think they're smart, but they're not. If they were smart, they wouldn't be in the stock market. Or if they're in it, they're simply in it as a momentum trader that say, look, I know this is BS. But hey, they're a bunch of idiots buying stocks. So I'm going to buy stocks now so I can sell to these idiots. And I'm going to get out the door before they realize the market has turned. Peter also talked about Minnesota Fed President Neil Kashkari. He is one of the most dovish central bankers at the Fed. In a recent speech, Kashkari suggested that the central bank might be able to use monetary policy to address wealth inequality. I really thought that was rich because one of the reasons we have a widening gap of wealth inequality is because of the Fed and because of the policies that Neil Kashkari advocates. Creating inflation, debasing the money, is a transfer of wealth from savers to debtors. When Peter says debtors, he doesn't mean the typical American consumer. He suggests people who have levered up to buy real assets. When you buy an asset, and you contract debt, inflation makes you rich because it annihilates the value of the money you borrowed. And now you're left with the real asset that you purchased. But who gets wiped out? The savers. And, who are the savers? The average guy who's got a 401k or a pension. He's got an annuity. He's got cash value in life insurance. He's got bonds. He's got some savings. He's the one getting wiped out. And so the people who levered up to buy assets, which are typically richer people, have gotten richer. And the people who haven't done that. Who aren't as sophisticated, don't have the incomes or the assets to do that. They're just trying to save their money. Well, they're getting eviscerated. 
The Fed policy also transfers wealth from wage earners to speculators. And it encourages consumers to take on debt by flooding the market with cheap money. I think it's really ridiculous for the Fed. I mean, this is about the pot calling the kettle black. The Fed saying they're going to do something about income inequality when they're the reasons that we have more income inequality than would typically be the case. Of course, you can't really have income equality in a free society. And even if you are going to embark on this misguided notion of fixing income inequality. How is the Fed going to do it? All it can do is print money. It's true, the game of QE can play out for a long time. But once you've removed all the wealth from the middle class via mass debt and government spending skyrocketing with reduced tax due to weaker economy, it will implode. Silver and gold are not and should never be seen as an asset of value in this current financial circus. But rather a hedge bet to protect you when it fails. The cheaper it holds in this circus the more you can accumulate without fear of missing out, FOMO. Thus making it easier financially to accumulate for your children or grandchildren. The solution should be in three words, free market capitalism. The problem is, this coming crisis is going to be so bad. It's going to be so much worse than 2008. And you know it's all going to be blamed on capitalism. It's all going to be the left saying, we told you so. We cut taxes for the rich, we deregulated. Trump inherited a great economy from Obama and everything he inherited, he squandered it with tax cuts for the rich. And things are going to be very tough. People will demand radical solutions. I wish the revolutionary solution could be free market capitalism, because we haven't had that in a long time. But everybody's convinced that that's all we've had. Even the people who supposedly defend capitalism think that it needs a makeover. That it needs to be redone for the modern era. Get government out, and market forces back in. We don't need to redo capitalism. We just need capitalism. What we have to do is get all the socialism out of capitalism. It's giving it a bad name. We need to get government out of all this stuff so that market forces can get back in. What the policy of the Fed does is, it transfers wealth from wage earners to speculators. Because the wage earners are seeing the value of their incomes, their wages being diminished because of the monetary policy of the Fed. The inflation is destroying the cost of their labor income. But it is helping to increase the value of the revenue that speculators get through financial leverage and other types of paper pushing and engineering. So they're making the rich richer. Who can afford to speculate? The middle class can't. They are just trying to collect a paycheck and clocking in at a job. The market is pushed up on liabilities the middle class will bear. When market collapses they will bear the brunt. The value of their hard work is going down. Because the cost of living is going up. But as much as the Fed wants to pretend that the cost of living is not going up, it is. And it's going up faster than most people's wages. So that is helping to drive income inequality. And of course the cheap money that the Fed puts out there. Also makes it easier for consumers to make a wrong choice, to borrow, to buy consumer goods. Private banks, loan, fractional reserve lending, create out of thin air, money, debt, to people, to business, to nations, to both sides of all wars, with interest, usury. Now, after many generations of this, of banksters buying up the entire world's resources and funding all conflicts, they own the world as a whole, monopoly. The banksters fund all sides of every conflict, insert themselves into every matter. Behind every conflict, there are banksters issuing credit and controlling the situation, regardless of who wins. It's the recent super injection of QE that will send us to the higher high moon mission for at least a year. It worked for magic man Ben Bernanke. Sing together with me, let the good times roll. These markets are an abomination. Trump is going to own the drawdown, crash when it happens. 1.3 trillion dollars in new debt this year already. The guy spends like a hooker with a crack addiction. The Fed repoed another 108 billion dollars this week. Pathetic. The banks aren't building reserves. They're running over to the casino. The US in only a few months had three rate cuts, initiated QE4 with 60 billion minimum purchase of treasuries, have 150 billion repo injections daily, increased the Federal Reserve balance sheet to more than 4.2 trillion, and the list goes on and on. These are tools that central banks have to combat recessions and depressions, and they should be used only in extreme emergency situations. 
such as the worst financial crisis in modern history in 2008. But not that is not the case here. Jay Powell and Mnuchin and Trump are obsessed with the stock markets because they want it to look good for Trump US presidential re-election. It's disgusting. There are trillions in junk waiting to implode. Once it starts, the Fed will be helpless to stop it. I predict it will be quick and violent. Printing more and forcing rates lower won't work. Feels like 2008 all over again. Only this time, much much worse. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.